Hi everyone. Let's take a look at the following example. A right circular cone is inscribed in a sphere of radius 15 centimeters. Find the dimensions of the cone that has the maximum volume. Step number one, draw a diagram. So I'm going to start with a three-dimensional diagram. Then we draw this in two-dimensional space. Then write down the equation of constraints. So when I think about a three-dimensional diagram, I'm thinking about the sphere. And inside the sphere, there is the cone. So roughly speaking, it looks something like that. And we know that the radius of the sphere is going to be 15 centimeters. So this measurement is going to be 15 centimeters. I can also connect this all the way to here. So these are equal. That's going to be 15 centimeters as well. This is going to be the radius, which we're going to denote with lowercase r. And I'm going to call this x. So one more time, just in case this is confusing for you, I want to make sure it's clear. I'm drawing it again in two dimensional space. So imagine you're looking at this from the side. So this is almost what I call the side view. So one more time, there's the triangle. There's this second triangle, which I'm going to highlight for you. These are equal. They're both going to be 15. This is 90 degrees, of course, just like the first case. This is going to be X. That's going to be R. Now, look what happens if I draw this again, a little bit larger for you. This is going to be 15, X and R, 90 degrees. Now, you can write down the let statement on your own. But based on this right angle triangle, C square equals to A square plus B square, which means 15 square equals to X square plus R square. Now, if you isolate for X, this means 225 equals to X square plus R square, or X square equals to 225 minus R square. You take the square root of both sides. Technically, there are two cases plus or minus, but since we're talking about length, the only case that's important is the positive case. X equals to a square root of 225 minus R square. This is something we're going to come back to in a moment. Again, this is called the EOC, equation of constraint. Now, let me switch colors. Our goal is to find the volume of the cone. And of course, the volume of a cone is going to be one third times pi r square h. And if you go back to the question, you're looking for the maximum volume. So you can write down the word maximize right here. Now, if I go back to the first diagram or the second diagram, this is going to be the entire height, height h. And if you really think about this, height is 15 plus x. So say, say this one more time, height h equals to 15 plus x. I'll put a box around this. So now I can go back, plug in x to be here, then plug in h to be there. Now, this means I can express volume as the function of radius. So the volume of the cone, which I'm just going to denote as v for now, as the function of radius, it's going to be one third times pi times r squared times, in brackets, 15 plus, again, x, which is basically right here. So it's going to be 15 plus the square root of 225 minus r squared. Now, we're almost ready 
to take the derivative, set it to zero, and solve for r in this case. Now, before we find v prime, I'm gonna expand this again at any given time. If you wanna expand this by using the arrows, this is always available to you. So if you go back and you look at this, this is gonna be one third pi r squared times 15. That's gonna be five pi r squared plus one over three times pi times r squared times, instead of saying the square root, I'm gonna express this in exponent form. So 225 minus r squared in brackets to the power of half. And again, we're now ready to take the derivative, set it to zero, solve for r. V prime of r equals to, when you take the derivative of r squared, that's gonna be two r, 2r times 5 pi, that's going to be 10 pi r plus 1 over 3 times pi. Now I'm going to put a big bracket here. I'm going to apply the product rule. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm thinking about the following. r squared is the first function, f of x, and 225 minus r squared to the power of half as the second part, g of x. Step one, when I apply the product rule, the derivative of r squared is going to be 2r times, I copy the second part, 225 minus r squared to the power of half, plus I copy the first part times the derivative of the second part. Now I might have to expand this a little bit. Let's take this away. We'll put the brackets back in a moment. This is going to be half times 225 minus r squared to the power of negative half times the derivative of negative r squared, negative 2r, just like that. Again, I'm gonna go back and highlight the part that I took the derivative and the first part, the derivative, just like that. I'm now gonna set this to zero and my goal is to solve for r. So I'm gonna express this in terms of 10 pi r. In the second part, I'm gonna express it as one fraction. So again, if you look at the denominator, it's gonna be three. I'm gonna copy pi for now. And in the square brackets, I'm gonna collect like terms. So if I go back up to the previous step, I can cross out half times two. That's gonna be one. I can also go back and take a common factor of 225 minus r squared to the power of negative half. Then in brackets, times 2r times 225 minus r squared to the power of 1. Again, when I think about 1 plus negative half, this will give you the half back. And minus r to the power of 3. Let's move this up a little bit. Now, I'm still going to put the equal sign in the middle, and I'm going to do the following. I'm still going to copy 0 on the left. I'm still going to copy 10 pi r to the right. What I'm going to do is express this fraction with positive exponents. So when you see this negative half, I'm going to bring it to the bottom. So it's going to be 3 times the square root of 225 minus r squared. And if I expand the top, that's going to be pi times 2r. So that's going to be 2 pi r times 225 minus r squared minus pi r cube. Now my goal is to bring the fraction to the left hand side in a moment. I'm still going to copy 0 equal to 10 pi r. If I expand this, again, I'm going to draw the arrows to make sure no one's left behind. That's going to be, again, you can start with the bottom, 3 times the square root of 225 minus r squared. 2 pi r times 225 is going to be 450 pi r minus 2 pi r cube minus pi r cube. So notice how this becomes effectively minus 3 pi r cube. Now if I collect like terms, look what happens. I'm still going to copy 0 equal to 10 times pi r. There's a common factor of 3, which I'll bring to the front. In brackets, it's going to be 150 times pi r minus pi r cube divided by 3 times the square root of 225 minus r squared. I'm going to cross out 3 divided by 3, which equals to 1.
I'm now ready to bring this to the other side. So I'm going to keep 10 pi r to the right. When I bring this to the other side, I'm going to put a negative sign at the front. So it's going to be negative of 150 pi r minus pi r cubed divided by the square root of 225 minus r squared. Now notice what I'm doing. I want to take out the common factor of pi. So I'll put the equal sign here. I'm going to copy pi at the front times 10 r. I'm going to expand this while factoring pi at the same time. So again, pi, open bracket, r cubed minus 150 times r all over the square root of 225 minus r squared. So again, notice how when I expand this, this is pi r cubed, which is exactly this part, negative 1 times negative pi r cubed. Likewise, negative 150 times r is the same as saying negative 150 times r with the common factor of pi. So now I can cross out pi from both sides, which effectively gives you 1. I can also rewrite the right-hand side with a 1 at the bottom. So it's going to be 10r divided by 1. I'm now going to cross multiply. So on the left, 1 times r cubed minus 150r is going to be r cubed minus 150r. On the right, 10 r times the square root of 225 minus r squared. Now in order to solve for r, I have to square both sides. Now something that you want to think about, and you can note down this idea, anytime you square both sides, very often, not always, you get additional mathematical answers, which mathematically works, but if you go back to the word problem, it may or may not work. On the left hand side of expand this, r cubed squared, it's going to be r to the power of 6 minus 2 times r cubed times 150r, which is going to be negative 300 times r to the 4 plus 150r quantity squared. So 150 times 150, that's going to be 22,500 times r to the power of 2. On the right, 10r squared is going to be 100 r squared. So again, 10 r squared means 10 r times 10 r. And when you square the square root, it's going to be 225 minus r squared. On the left hand side, I'm going to copy as is. On the right, I'm going to expand this. And in a moment, you're going to see there's a common term that could be crossed out. So on the right, again, I'm drawing the arrows. 100 r squared times 225 is going to be 2 or 22,500 r squared minus 100 r to the power of 4. Notice I can cross out 22,500 r squared from each side. I'm now going to bring everything to the left hand side. I'm going to factor and solve. So if you think about this, this is going to be r to the power of 6. When I bring negative 100 to the left, that becomes positive 100, and they're both in terms of r to the 4, so it's going to be r to the 6 minus 200 r to the 4. There's a common factor of r to the 4. In brackets, it's going to be r squared minus 200, which equals to 0. Again, divide this into two different columns. In the first case, r to the 4 is going to be 0 which means r could be plus or minus 0. Now, I'm putting a box around this not because this is the final answer. In fact, this is going to be rejected, but that is one of the mathematical answers. Now, in the second case, again, r squared equals to, or r squared minus 200 equals to 0. r squared equals to 200, even though mathematically, there are two cases. We know only the positive case is meaningful. So r could have been negative root 200 or positive root 200, but this one is omitted or rejected because of the restriction. Again, in a different color, remember, the restriction of the radius r is going to be in between 0 and 15. So again, remember that the restriction is going to be between 0 and 15. And of course, that includes all cases, whether you're looking at the critical points as a maximum or a minimum. So if I go back to here, r equals to positive square root of 200, 
that's going to be 10 times the square root of 2. Now, one approach is to compare them. And all you're doing is this. You're trying to compare the endpoints with the critical points to find the actual answer. So again, the three cases here, right? The volume in terms of zero, or in terms of 15, those are the endpoints, and in terms of 10 times the square root of two. Now, I'm not gonna do all the mechanical steps with you, but what I am gonna say is this. You can press pause, take your calculator and plug it back in. We know volume is gonna be equal to one divided by three times pi times r squared times in brackets 15 plus the square root of 225 minus r squared. So you can plug it back in, round the same decimals as the one I'm gonna show you. And I think I'm gonna round it to one decimal place. So in the first case, if you plug in zero, this is gonna give you zero. In the second case, in the third case, these are approximations. Again, this is 10 root two. Let's make sure this is clear. This is gonna be 4,188. 0.8 centimeter cube. And in the last case, 3,534.3 centimeter cube. Now remember, your goal is to find the maximum volume, right? So this is going to be the maximum. So again, we know that the radius is going to be exactly 10 root 2, which means if you go back to the equation of constraint, which means height equals to 15 plus the square root of 225 minus r squared. That's going to be 15 plus the square root of 225 minus, now instead of saying 10 root 2, you can also express it as root 200. Now, I'm not going to use a calculator. I'm going to do this mentally with you, and I hope you can confirm this on your own. That's going to be 15 plus, now if you think about 225 minus 200, that's going to be 25. The square root of 25 is going to be 5 plus 15. That's going to be 20. So again, radius is going to be 10 root 2. Height is going to be 20. And of course, in terms of metric, it's going to be centimeters. And now you can write down, therefore, the dimensions are radius of 10 root 2 centimeters and height of 20 centimeters. I hope this makes sense.